Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm playing in the tier 10 British heavy tank. It is the Super Conqueror in a double helping of gameplay, where there's no other way to say this, but it, it looks like um, an ambulance should be called. But uh, not for me in this situation, as you're going to see. So when I'm playing in the Super Conqueror, it's all about going hull down in this vehicle. I'm going to be pumping up my damage output with a bond gun rammer on this vehicle, vents, and I'm also going to be using a turbo as well. My second build for the Super Conqueror will be dropping the turbo to be using a durability device, and that can really help on your city maps or on maps where you just really don't have to travel very much. I feel like when I'm playing on Live Oaks that there is more need to be able to get around the map, and so I will be taking a turbo on this tank instead. And the turbo also really helps with the reverse speed on the Conqueror as well, and oh, that's a savage start to this game. Did we manage to actually Amarak that Leopard prototype there, or was that just uh, somebody else managing to hit them at the same time? Okay, so when I'm playing on Live Oaks, and when I'm playing in a Super Conqueror, I want to go hold down. It's all about getting on a ridgeline, it's all about working a location. And we can see that I've got two tier 9 tank destroyers here, who look like they want to be able to support this flank. However, I feel like it would be probably best if they go back hide behind the bushes, and I'm just the one at the front. And I can hopefully stop the enemies from being able to A, shoot my friends, and B, from advancing through this flank. Now, a lot of people would be in this kind of a situation when you think, oh, you're by yourself, should you run away? Well, no, a super conqueror, it kind of just needs to dig in and make it stand, and you can't really abandon a ridge. You don't really have the mobility to be able to run away, so you just gotta blooming well deal with it, grit your teeth, and try and get through whatever is going to be coming for you. And even if that's a 277, even if it's a Chieftain prototype with the support of a T30 and also a Leopard uh, prototype that we've managed to see at least so far in this game, you just gotta keep going. And this is just the tier 10 British jewel in the crown of the heavy tank line. Just doing its thing. 10 degrees of gun depression. Incredible damage per minute. One of the best damage per minute possible on any heavy tank in the game with great gun handling, good accuracy, and enough damage per minute to make the enemy seriously regret just sitting out in front of this thing. We've already managed to pick up 2,400 damage in the first two and a half minutes of this game, but we've got our work cut out for us if we want to try and get through this one. As there's now five tanks sitting opposite me, and there's two tanks that are behind me that could just drop over the ridgeline or start to dig out my tank destroyers at a moment's notice. Unfortunately, the Jagdtiger on my team fell, but the Tortoise is still going, and the Tortoise is still on full hit points, so I thought I had a good wedge at the back that will hopefully be providing me support fire if the enemies decide to all in me. And I know that the Chieftain Prototype is literally packing uh, a third less damage per minute than me. They got about 2,000. Uh, I'm going to be packing about 3,000 with uh, all of the equipment and the field mods that we do have on this tank. And it's just about clapping. It's just about keeping the pressure up and harassing and just landing shell after shell in. And when you've got a decent turret, when you've got the 10 degrees of gun depression, and more importantly, when you've got the rate of fire, you just got to keep going. And the Chieftain Prototype... He doesn't have the biggest of weak points, but if he doesn't turn his turret to the right to be able to cover it, it is quite exposed. Looks like they try to plant a shot at the uh, tortoise, and I'm going to make my way up as the artillery finishes off the leopard prototype. And now, this is just wonderful. I love driving through graveyards that we've created of the enemy team, and it's not just those couple of vehicles that we vanquished. It's the fact that we forced multiple other tanks to retreat. The 277 just decided to go right through the middle of the map, Usually a good play. It's a play that I will make to go to where the TVP is. The T-30 is deciding to run away and I greedily switch to an HE round. I penetrate it, but it only rolls for 393. That's practically a min roll as this tank has 515 alpha damage there. At least I believe it was an HE roll, but that's such a low roll I'm starting to even question myself. The second shell, however, doesn't penetrate the TVP and I only roll for 44 damage. Just rolling the dice with Wargaming's HE changes. There's no guarantee to do reasonable amounts of damage now. It's all or nothing. You either do 10% of the damage that you would have dealt or you do all of the damage that you would uh, that you would hope for with that bonus HE. Nevertheless, now that this TVP is down to about 470 hit points, one penetrating HE shell should be enough. And when you've managed to get 120 millimeters of penetration like the Super Conqueror has, ooh, 
oh, it just feels so good when it actually goes in. Of course, I could have just fired two AP shells and then I wouldn't have had to have tried to pen the second shell with HE. But when you're hitting for 479, and more importantly, I'm not having to waste the APCR rounds on this tank, oh, it feels good. Unfortunately, the CC Mark II actually starts to angle their armor a little bit more there as they turn around, so I can't penetrate the second shell and it only rolls for 73. I should have really switched to an APCR round there. With intuition on this vehicle and the fact that I'm using vents and a Bond gun rammer, I can, uh, I can easily switch out very quickly. Not a lot of people realize that crew skill massively impacts the intuition switch time, and vents will massively, well, not massively, it will significantly improve your crew skill. And the way that it scales is the reduction means that it, 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 it's very substantial. For example, on my 60 TP on my free-to-play account, I think it takes me like four seconds to be able to switch, but when I'm using a premium consumable on my main account, I think it's down to like two and a half. It's very significant indeed. Luckily, we bounce a gold round there from the T30, but I didn't expect that Conway to be in a bush. Also using the high alpha damage gun. But unfortunately uh, for this Conway, oh dear, that is not what you want in World of Tanks. Doesn't look like they've got the best of repair crews, but to be fair, the Super Conqueror has one of the best of rates of fire in World of Tanks, and so we're able to lock an entire vehicle down. I'm going to go for an HE shell here, and the reason I'm going for an HE shell is because I wanted to um, be able to save those AP shells, possibly later on, maybe for the T124, who I didn't have time to check how many hit points they're on, but seeing that they're only on about 500 hit points, I probably didn't need to min-max that much. But when you're starting to run out of ammunition because you've had to kick so much butt in this game of World of Tanks, uh, yeah, I think every little helps. And maybe I shouldn't have uh, wasted a couple of those HE shells earlier on the TVP. But then again, uh, the two AP shells versus two HE shells, it was probably a good trade. All right, so we've got one HE shell left, and now there's a Waffenträger Alpha 100 and a GW Tiger on the enemy team. This replay, I believe, was from just a, a couple of months ago, even though September, for some reason, feels like it was years ago right now. Uh, but then again, when I think about January, January kind of feels as if it was yesterday. All right, so now we lock down the tracks of the WT Alpha 100, knowing that they're not going to have a repair kit for the next 90 seconds, and we're up to eight thousand damage that we have seen so far this game boys and girls and make that hopefully another 500 but oh another low roll there so we're gonna have to waste our time with the gw tiger before we turn our attention to the wt alpha 100 who with that five round auto loading yag tiger gun uh we've got to be very careful in this kind of a scenario I was just wondering how much more damage I could deal in this situation, especially with the blind fire on the Leopard earlier. This was actually close to being uh, a 10,000 damage game, and it would have been sweet if it happened again, but oh well. I'm, I'm just only going to have to deal with 9,000 in this game of World of Tanks, boys and girls. This was a treat, and it was adding to yet another one of the tallies of different vehicles that I've managed to do over 9,000 on this year, which must be about 10 different tanks. It's not usual for me. It's almost as if the amount I've been playing World of Tanks, especially at tier 10 with all of the field mods, has been helping out. So now we're rolling out on Malinovka, and instead of using a turbo on this map, I've decided to use my durability build instead to keep my tracks healthy and also to have that extra 10% hit points to hopefully stay in the game a little bit longer. And once again, it's British tanks versus British tanks. And this is one of those kind of personal matchups on the hill. We're playing against a chieftain and we're playing against a Cranvan, both very scary vehicles to fight in hull down scenarios. And they've also got some very decent tier 9 hull down tanks in the form of the Chieftain prototype. And so I really wanted to stick it to that Chieftain. And luckily for me, they have been overconfident and they have exposed themselves. I'm hoping I get a shot into the weak point of the Chieftain there, but it wasn't actually the case. It's kind of cute to see a tier 10 Chieftain uh, alongside a tier 9 Chieftain there, right? I'm always a little bit envious. I think every Super Conqueror player out there, they have to admit, they're a little bit envious about uh, a Chieftain at Tier 10, right? They're just packing the extra alpha damage, APCR is standard, they're packing the extra mobility. Not not better in every single regard, but definitely most of them. And I think if, if any player out there would not trade their Super Conqueror for a chief, Chieftain in a heartbeat at Tier 10, I don't think there are many drivers out there would, would that would not make that trade. 
All right, so now we're dealing with the tier 9 Italian TD over towards the right. We finish him off, and now we've got the VK right where we want them, which is below. And oh my word, the artillery is doing some serious work this game in locking down the enemy team and stopping them from escaping. And yeah, without a turbo and with a dead driver, I'm definitely not the fastest of tanks. No one ever thinks of the Super Conqueror as a fast vehicle to begin with. But yeah, when you're, you're missing the turbo and when you've got that dead driver, it gets even worse. So I decided to fire an APCR round here because the AP just wasn't guaranteed to go through the E75. I guess in retrospect I probably could have tried to fire an HE shell, but maybe I would have only done about 60 damage or so and left him as a one shot. And that's what every Super Conqueror wants to do, is get the finishing blow on the Chieftain. And just like that, in three minutes of this game we managed to pick up 3,400. But this is the part of the game where um, I want to try and mop up as much as I possibly can. I was kind of surprised the STLV managed to catch me there, but they do. And luckily, with the decent view range that every heavy tank can get with or without a premium consumable these days, as soon as you've got a good crew because of the field mods, we're able to easily spot out a bunch of enemy vehicles. And yeah, this does feel a little bit slow right now, yeah? Uh, Kind of wish I had the turbo for this scenario. But really, this isn't going to win the game, this part. This part's just getting extra, you know? It's about trying to turn your pretty good games into your epic games. So, so far, we're at sub-5,000 combined. We're sitting about 4,600, 4,700 combined so far. Let's see how much of that remaining 8,400 hit points on the enemy team we can manage to mop up. And it's about being cheeky, it's about being aggressive. In this scenario, sure, we might get caught, but I feel like we've got to risk it. Firstly, that's an HE pen through the side of the Char Fuchi of 4 for 444. Are we going to get another one through the side of the Leopard? Well, unfortunately, he Amorax us just, but we can turn our attention to the Char Fuchi of 4 again. 424 spotting, another 519 damage with a penetrating HE round to the side of the, the tier 9 French. Auto-loading medium tank, and now we're really rocking, but oh dear, there's scary tier 10 tanks, and then there's terrifying tier 10 tanks, and luckily, we managed to tra track the FV215B 183, hold them in place, and we get an extra little poultry 14 spotting. Bit of a misplay there, I think I should have aimed a little bit higher against the T55A, but it was a tricky shot against a Soviet German turret over a ridge there. And that one, that was just poor. Honestly, I think I was just firing for chance, and I'm a bit frustrated about not keeping the pain train rolling. And now, we're up to 7,500 combined in this game. We're going to load an HE shell once again. We're going to enter the side of the Leopard there, roll for 546, and get another 700 and... 29 tracking, and now converting this game into the uh, 9k territory near about, but there's still two vehicles left to deal with. There's a full health STRV 103B and a full health Object 261, and that's what I like to see. Tracers letting me know exactly where the artillery is, and knowing that they're going to be reloading for about 15 seconds. So again, HE round loaded, nice roll there, 510 damage, loading the standard rounds now to hopefully be able to get the final shot into the SDRV 103B. Well, when I say final shot, they're still on full hit points. And wow, yeah, where's the, they're doing a bit of a magical Swedish disappearing act right now. Are they stuck right in the corner? They gotta be, surely they gotta be. And there he is, he gets spotted by me. The 260 hits him, we get splashed by the artillery. Reticle bounces up there in some kind of weird pixel. And lo and behold, a absolutely savage 11,000 combined that we saw. And this round truly was a case of Veni Vidi Vici, where we came, we saw, and we definitely conquered in this super British tank. I definitely got a little bit lucky here. Uh, just to clarify, the Super Conqueror's hull is absolutely tragic, both with regards to the lower plate and also with regards to the side protection. So don't think that every Super Conqueror would have been able to, well, not every Super Conqueror, but don't think that I would have been able to just YOLO down the slope every single time and be able to pull off these kind of magical results. But really, in those kind of situations when you know you've won the game because you've taken the hill, it's definitely worth risking it to take down that glorious finish. With over doubling 
what combines we had earlier on in the battle as we were just leaving the hill. So our first game on Live Oaks was an ace tanker for our 1590 base experience and a high caliber for the 9167 damage that we dealt. I was a little bit disappointed that we maybe didn't get a little bit more against Leopard Prototype as our three shells only dealt 869 to them. Nevertheless, you can't really complain about doing over 9000 damage and we get a top gun with our six kills. Unfortunately, in this game, we actually fired a lot of credits worth of ammunition because we ran out of our standard rounds and showing near impeccable marksmanship hitting 35 out of 36 shots really shows you just how good the ammunition on the Super Conqueror is with regards to its gun handling and the vehicle's accuracy. In our subsequent game on Malinovka, this was 6,730 damage and 4,400 assistance, smashing over 11,000 combined in this game, giving us an ace tank of a 1,544 base XP. And this time, even with resupplying the premium consumable at full price, we made a 32,000 credits profit as we didn't run out of standard ammunition. So the Super Conqueror, definitely the kind of tank that can bully its way through situations where all seems lost. When you get this thing on a ridge line, just put the brakes on, dig in, and try and go down swinging. And sometimes you'll find that you're not the one that the ambulance is being called for. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today in this king of the british heavy line really hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know what you think about the super conqueror in the comments down below and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon